Welcome to Movie Summary. Today I will show you a crime, drama, mystery film from 1995, titled Seven. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Detective William Somerset, Morgan Freeman, is getting ready to retire and escape the horrors of the unnamed city's perpetual reign and urban ruin. He partners up with Detective David Mills, Brad Pitt, an arrogant, youthful, and irritable cop from Springfield, a relatively small town, before retiring. At the scene of a murder Somerset is looking into, he and Somerset cross paths. Somerset offers to take Mills out for a drink so they can get to know one another and have a conversation, but Mills is impatient to start working right away and is not impressed by Somerset's efforts to mentor him. The two look into the death of Bob Mack, a morbidly obese man who had been given spaghetti before being kicked in the stomach and split open. While Mills receives the murder case of renowned defense attorney Eli Gould, Gene Borkin, who was shot and left greed scrawled in his blood on the floor, Somerset looks into the murder. Gould bled to death after being made to remove a pound of flesh off his body. The obese man was compelled to eat the spaghetti and three slivers of a plastic-like substance were discovered in his stomach. The police captain hands Somerset the container with the proof. When Somerset visits the victim's home, he discovers three groove marks in front of the refrigerator and discovers that the plastic-like slivers precisely fit into them. Somerset stares behind the refrigerator, knowing the slivers came from it being pushed. Behind the refrigerator, he discovers the word, gluttony, scrawled in Greece, along with a message that includes a passage from Paradise Lost by Milton. The author Somerset hypothesizes that a serial murderer is committing crimes based on the remaining five of the seven deadly sins. Tracy Mills, Gwyneth Paltrow, the wife of Mills, asks Somerset over for dinner so that they can try to get along. The couple mentions that the realtor was anxious for them to see the apartment immediately because she was trying to hide the proximity of the train. As they are eating, an elevated train comes by on the neighboring track, shaking the building and all of its belongings and people. Mills and Somerset review the case materials from the two scenes after Tracy has gone to bed. They discover a photograph of Gold's wife with blood daubed all over her face. The detectives have a devastated Mrs. Gould, Julie Arasog, Look at the photos in a safe place and she finds an abstract artwork that is upside down, thinking that this signifies she is supposed to notice something about the murder scene that no one else would. Somerset discovers fingerprints around the words, help me, on the wall beneath the painting after brushing some powder over it. The prints are later linked to a pedophile named Victor, Michael Reed McKay, who managed to avoid being found guilty of the rape of a kid thanks to the efforts of his lawyer, Eli Gould, the greed victim. This was discovered after running the fingerprints via AFIS. When SWAT and the detectives raid Victor's apartment, they discover that he is the sloth victim who has been chained to his bed for exactly one year and one day, as shown by photographs that were taken every day from the moment he was found. Interestingly, he is still alive, albeit with serious physical and mental decline. The prints were made on the wall behind the picture when his hand was severed and pushed upon it. Victor requests to be questioned by Mills and Somerset in the hospital, but the doctor responds that he has eaten off his tongue and that his brain is mush as a result of the incident. Tracy phones Somerset later that day and asks to meet with him. The following morning, Tracy runs into Somerset in a diner and tells him how sad, the city, has made her. Tracy admits the real reason for her request to meet at Somerset's nudge. She is expecting terrified of raising a kid where they now reside, and terrified to tell David. Somerset gives her advice to only notify her husband if she decides to have an abortion, and he uses himself as an example. He demanded his girlfriend have an abortion, and now he regrets it. Later on that day, Somerset obtains a list of patrons who have borrowed books about the seven deadly sins from the library by utilizing a contact in the FBI. The detectives locate John Doe on the list and quickly go to his apartment. As Doe enters his house, he hides his face and notices them. He then takes out a revolver and starts shooting. Following a brief pursuit, Doe strikes Mills with a tire iron, holds him at gunpoint, but releases him, then abruptly flees. Mills feels they have a good reason to break into Doe's flat because Doe fired a gun at them. The method they used to locate Doe's flat was unlawful, and Doe would get away if they caught him, says Somerset in an effort to calm him down. Even so, Mills slams the door. They explore the flat and discover Doe's thinking journals, crime scene evidence, and a photo of Mills fending off Doe, who
who was at the time posed as a press photographer, as well as trophies from the crimes. In addition to apologizing for punching Mills and congratulating the cops on their discovery, John Doe calls the apartment and expresses his huge admiration for the young detective. He hangs up after saying that his plans have been altered as a result of their activities. They also come across a picture of a teenage prostitute named Kat Muller, who they suspect could be the next victim. They find the SM Leather Store where Doe ordered a sexual accessory thanks to a receipt. The young woman is shortly discovered dead in a room with the word lust inscribed on the door. A clearly terrified man, Leland Orser, who was coerced by Doe into using the enormous strap on dildo with a blade attachment to rape and kill the girl is also discovered in the room. Every customer used to bring distinctive clothing or equipment into the establishment, therefore the owner, Wild Billy, Martin Serene, is unable to provide any information regarding the physical characteristics or briefcase John Doe utilized. The following morning, a model named Heidi Shans is discovered dead, with the words pride scribbled nearby. She had her nose amputated, to spite her face, and Doe offered her the option of killing herself with sleeping drugs or phoning for assistance and continuing to live with scars. She picked the first option and took the pills. John Doe approaches the investigators as they make their way back to the police headquarters, his hands bleeding, he removed the skin off his fingertips to prevent recognition, and he confesses. He consults with his attorney and decides that he will confess to all the killings if he can lead Somerset and Mills to two more bodies. The last two victims may never be identified, according to Doe's attorney, who also issues a warning if Somerset and Mills don't reach an understanding. The investigators concur that they want a confession. The rest of the task force can listen in on Somerset and Mills' talk with Doe because to the mics that have been taped to both of their chests. Mills tries to share a worry he has with Tracy with Somerset during the preparation but finds it difficult to do so. A police aircraft follows the three as they drive to the city's desert outskirts seeking security, flown by John Santin and James Deeth. Doe justifies the killings by saying that he wants to get revenge on the wicked and wants to expose the world's true evil. He continues by saying that because he was selected to do so, he will be remembered and admired for what he has accomplished. As Doe continues, the disgusted Mills erupts in wrath and screams at Doe, while Somerset seems unperturbed but obviously alarmed. Doe instructs them to a specific location next to some power cable towers once they have reached the outskirts. Doe is led outside by the detectives to a free space. Soon after, a van drives along, and Somerset stops it a few hundred yards away, leaving Mills in the rear to protect Doe. The delivery of a box to Mills at this location at precisely 7 o'clock allegedly cost $500, according to the driver, Richmond Arquette. Somerset slams the box shut after being horrified by what he discovers within. Doe tells Mills that he admires Mills' life to the point of envying his wife and their union as he sprints back to him and cries out for him to put his gun down. He continues, adding that he went to Mills' house and tried to play husband with Tracy that day, but it didn't work out so he took a souvenir in its place, her gorgeous head. Doe had intended for Mills to kill him because Doe had been envious of Mills' easier life and was therefore guilty of envy. Additionally, he tells Mills that Tracy was expecting a child and pleaded to be kept alive for the sake of the unborn kid. Despite Somerset's pleas, Mills shoots Doe in the head as the latter closes his eyes to accept his sentence because he is so distraught about the death of his wife and the news that she was pregnant. Five more shots are fired at Doe's body by Mills. Mills completes Doe's masterpiece by killing Doe out of retaliation, becoming the embodiment of the sin of wrath. Somerset is unable to take action and can only watch. Their captain assures Somerset that they will take care of Mills after having a catatonic Mills removed, even though he is aware that the jury would find him guilty. Whatever he needs, Somerset responds. Also indicating that he will remain on the force, he informs his captain that he will be around. The film finishes with Somerset reciting Ernest Hemingway as the camera pans away from the desert. The world is a good place and is worth defending. Regarding the second part, I concur.